is Two Grown-Ups and a Mouse, episode number 14. Today we are talking about Epcot Undiscovered Future World Tour, what to wear at the parks, and Tony's Town Square Restaurant located in Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. Everything Disney in and out of the house. Two grown-ups and a mouse. Hi there, I'm AJ. Now I'm Andrew. And you are listening to Two Grown-Ups and a Mouse. You found us. You found us. You're listening to your podcast. You're listening to our podcast. Well, yeah. But you're listening through a podcast system. Exactly. Or on our website. Right. Or on YouTube. Correct. Because you can find us all those places. Yep. Google. What's it, what's it called? The Google one? Uh, the Google one. I don't remember. <laughs> Good job. You're <laughs> supposed to be the technical one here. Apple iTunes, Spotify, all of them. Yep. Pretty much all of them. I don't want to say all of them because maybe there's some we don't know of. No, I think we're on pretty much all of them. We're on all the ones that matter. Oh, yeah. How about that? We are on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Two grown-ups and a mouse. Or our website. Two grown-ups and a mouse. Dot com. Dot com. On our website, you can listen to the episodes. You can see a couple pictures. You can give us feedback. Yep. We want your feedback. Absolutely. Give us your feedback. Sure. Please. Pretty please. With sugar on top. Exactly. But right now, whether you're giving us feedback right now or not is not relevant as we are going to start talking about stuff. Specifically, we're going to start talking about Epcot Undiscovered Future World Tour. Yep. Last year, we did a tour. We did. I of Epcot. Yep. Yeah. That was the World Showcase. This year, we did a tour at Epcot of Future World. Right. Did you like it? I did. So it was, did I. It was informative. Anything you didn't like about it? Uh, not particularly. Yeah. I know something. What? We had to be there at 8.15 in the morning. Well, that always sucks. But but other just... than that, there was nothing that we didn't like. We just aren't morning people. Yeah, the sad part is that they don't really do tours in the afternoon. Other... Well, there's a few, but not very many. They do tours that start in the morning and go until midday. Or, I mean, they do have seven and eight hour, hour tours. That right. might Maybe longer. But, um, but for the most part, they do like to get them started Earlier in the day. Okay, good looking. Uh huh. Yeah. No, they do like to start their tours a little bit earlier, and I'm guessing, again, guess, not fact. Uh, I would guess that the reason is it's probably easier to gather people early in the morning. They probably have more people showing interest. Because they can do the tour and then still have the rest of their day, not have to stop what they're doing to go do a tour and then go back. You right. know, I mean, it's different. Look, like you have to eat. Look, so you have to stop to I'm not done talking. <laughs> you have to you have to stop for lunch. You have to stop for dinner, but you don't have to stop for a tour. You should see these faces that Andrew's making at me. I only wish I had picked up my phone and taken a picture of them. I, I was going to say the other reason might be the weather. It's typically cooler in the morning. Less chance of rain, because it rains in the afternoon in Florida for a good part of the year. That is true. So if you have a, you know, four-hour tour that, but, that only lasts till noon or a little after, you might beat the rain. But a lot of people do like to park hop. Right. I mean, you and I, we do it, but for different reasons, you know, because we're not the type of people to go to the parks from open till close. Right. And, you know, we just go there to give us something to do. We enjoy the atmosphere. We enjoy walking around. So we go to one park and then we take a break to rest our feet, to take a nap. And then we go to another park sure. because we haven't been there. But a lot of people, you know, maybe they only have four days or three days, but there's four parks plus Disney Springs. So they park hop because they want to get everything in. So sure. by putting tours earlier in the day, it makes it easier for them because, for example, this tour was at Epcot. So they show up at Epcot early in the morning. They go to the tour. It starts at 8.30. It's over at around 12.30. They can stay at Epcot for a few more hours if they want to, but they still have plenty of time to go to another park. Sure. I mean, like that's I said, that's... Probably all of the above. <laughs> right. That, that's just, you know, our guess on, on what it is because we have now done those two tours. We have done Keys to the Kingdom. We 
did, I don't remember the name of it because they don't offer it anymore. The train. It wasn't. Oh, we didn't the, do the train. It was the one where there were just four of us. That was the uh, mm-hmm. Mickey's Magical Milestones or something along those lines. Right. And and they don't have that tour anymore, though. Right. Honestly, that was probably my favorite out of all the tours we've done. Well, that it was, was the least expensive. It was, it was the cheapest. Uh, it was a good value because we got a set of autographed ears and some picture opportunities. And like you said, there was just us and another couple. So it was kind of, it was a quasi private tour. It, it was either $30 and we saved 10%. So it was 25 or it was $25 and we saved $5. So it was 20. So, you know, right. we paid 20 or $25 a person. Nikki ears sell for about $15. Well, back then, a, a, little, a couple dollars cheaper, but maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe they were $12. And water, even back then, was 2 or $3. Right. So it was like, okay, <laughs> basically yeah. we're paying $10 for this tour. So that, that was my favorite tour because of the value. Right. But my point about all the tours we've done is that all of them have been early in the morning, with the right. exception of the Behind the Seeds tour that they offer at Epcot, which I just looked at it the other day. I believe it's $20. Yeah. Um, it used to be 15 but either right. way, uh, that, yes, it is a tour and it's great. And we've done it multiple times because it's inexpensive and it's great. Yeah. Um, however, they do offer it continuously throughout the day. Right. So that tour, you know, you can make a reservation if you want to, but it's not necessarily necessary. At least when we went, it wasn't necessary to make a reservation. If you're going during a busy period, you know, in the summer or on holiday, it probably pays to get a reservation. You probably don't have to wait 180 days out, but it might pay to do it, you know, a week or two out. Just to make sure that you can right. get in if that's something that's really important yeah. to you. But, but it's a fun tour. So. Oh, yeah, no, that's a that's a great tour. And, and I was just talking to a coworker about it because they expressed a little bit of interest in it. And I said, that's a great tour to do to see if you like tours. And if you like that, then you can spend a little bit more money and do another tour. But that's a great right. first tour to experience to kind of see what the tours are going to be like. Sure. But let's talk more about the tour that we just did. Right. So, again, we did the Epcot Undiscovered Future World Tour, which yep. is a tour of Future World at right. Epcot, kind of like the name describes. Right. There were eight people in our group. Right. Last year when we did the World Showcase Tour, and there were four of us in our group, but we passed by the future world tour at one point like right. we kind of met over towards the middle somewhere you know we passed by them or it was another tour going on the point is we saw another tour that had between 12 and 20 people in it right i don't remember the exact number it's not relevant right. but the point is you know, i'm pretty sure they would have a little more than eight people i know in our group someone was talking about the keys to the kingdom tour and their friend just went on one. And I believe they said there were 22 people right. in that group. So, you know, yeah, you would have to double check when you're making the reservation. They may be able to tell you if there's a maximum capacity. It's not going to be too many. No, but you know, but it, you may or may not get a little more. What's, what's the word I'm thinking of? Come on, Andrew, read my mind. You could do it. Uh, I don't know. You know, personalized attention, but there's, yeah, In, intimate, I guess, is the word I was, you know. Well, it's a good way to put it, too, because you're not going to get, you don't get, it's not like having your own, you know, custom tour guide. You're still going on the tour, but you, obviously you have as much, you pretty much have as many chances as you want to ask it, as many questions as you want. And it don't, they don't necessarily have to be related to the tour uh, either. So, I mean, you can, you can pry your brain and obviously the the smaller the tour, you know, it's, you get to spend a little more time and maybe a little more detail on everything just because you don't have to wait. You know, when you, when you go in and you're looking at a picture on the wall or whatever, you know, this is some historical picture for something, 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 something Disney, instead of having to wait for 20 people to right. to, to look at it. <laughs> right. And I felt that eight was a really nice number yeah. because it wasn't so small that you felt awkward. Right. Like, okay, he keeps on, he or she, you know, keeps on looking at me because there's no one else to look at. Right. But it wasn't so many where if we wanted to say something or had a question or had a comment, it was easy for us to get that in there because right. of the size of our group. I mean, specifically, we are a couple. There were, so there was us, there was another couple. Yep. Then there were two girls who I'm guessing were in their early 20s, you know, late teens, early 20s, somewhere in that 
possibly a, a, age range because you have to be 18 to go on that tour Six, 16 or 18 yeah and one of them said something about oh when i used to work here right so that's why i figured she had to be at least 18 years old right so there were those two girls and then there were two single women right who had both opted to do the tour yep. so it was a nice mix and you know uh most of us talk to each other at one point or the other you sure. know, said a little bit here or there um and what's great about tours and this is just general you know it's funny because we're supposed to be talking about the specific tour we went on but we keep on talking in generalities because a lot of the tours have a lot in common right and one of the things is that the people that go on these tours are generally disney freaks sure you know like we are i'm right. saying freaks in a good way i'm not saying it in a derogatory way whatsoever you know these are people that really enjoy disney they aren't they aren't just people that are like oh we're going to the parks let's spend a hundred dollars and or however much it is you know it's right. not a hundred and go to this tour these are people that really are interested in disney they're interested in the history they're in interested in how things work so these are people that really want to obtain that knowledge and that foresight and you know everything so that's really nice that you're around a bunch of like-minded people sure so that you know has um that's definitely similar in all the tours that we have done yeah so this tour it is at epcot and we met at eight fifteen behind the pin station right and then they gave us the ear set so that the microphone system right. well we should we should mention all the tours nowadays is if you haven't been on a tour in a long time or if you've never been on one you know, when you when you hear about us talking about twenty plus people on a tour, you don't have to worry about hearing the tour guide because now all the tours include the, the the tour guide has a microphone on him, and then he has a little transmitter, and then you have a little speaker that you can like a little headphone that you can put in your ear. Because I remember the first time we did Keys to the Kingdom, and then you know this poor girl that was doing the tour, we didn't have those headphones. This was this was back more than a decade ago. You know, we didn't have those headphones and it was like if you were if you fell behind a little bit or whatever else you didn't hear a thing that she was saying especially in a big group so right so so that's why they asked us to check in at eight fifteen right. because they want time to give us those headsets right. and they also gave us a bottle of water each which yep. is nice i mean granted you can bring your own water into the park sure. which we did we both had our own bottle of water right. on a, on our person already but when they offered us a bottle of water we took it because they charge over three dollars a bottle of water yep so we said you're giving us water yes please thank you exactly and actually when we started the tour the tour guide even said to us you know those bottles of water they gave you you need to drink it and when you finish it you need to fill it because no one has ever fainted on my tour before right. and it's not going to happen now well, that, when, when that, you, that's a paraphrase, but <laughs> well, that's, well, that's probably true too, though. So. <laughs> no, but that that was basically what he said to us. Yep. Which you know we kind of laughed, but it's true because even though it starts in the morning, which again that's probably another reason it's not as hot right. earlier in the day than it is later in the day, so it's a little more comfortable. That's what that's what I said earlier. But. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so, I don't listen to you. What'd you say? How rude. Exactly. No, but so we, we met at 8.15. We got our headsets. We got our water. We went and sat under the electric umbrella yep. outside in that area. And actually, we started having a nice conversation with a woman who, one of the two single women who were on the tour. Yep. We had a little uh, nice conversation with her. And when the, everyone had checked in or, you know, it was basically time, the tour guide came over to get us and he told us that when we're on stage, anywhere that, you know, everybody else can go take pictures, you're, you're fine. But anytime we were going backstage, photographs were not allowed. And that also is true for every tour. Right. They do not want you taking pictures backstage because they don't want to ruin the magic for people who don't want the magic ruined. Sure. You know, some people don't want to know what happens. They just want it to be magical and wonderful and they don't want to know. Right. So well, that and the backstage areas are not, you know, Disney spends millions of dollars to make the 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 places where all the customers are wonderful and beautiful and themed properly. But backstage, it's it's all business. We're not customers. We're guests. 
Well, and they aren't employees; they are cast members. Well, that's correct. Because we are on a stage. Didn't he, didn't the tour guide even say that? That you know, we're, well, it's they, just a big stage, and they, they say that about for every tour, and that's probably you know, when when you're at Disney, they don't they use uh they use theater and and movie type terms where it's you're a cast member, you're a uh, a guest, you're on stage, you're off stage. So on stage is anywhere that you can go as a as a normal person walking around and backstage is obviously employee only areas so in this tour he said we're going to visit every section of future world right which we did and the first thing we visited was spaceship earth yep which he told us a little bit about it and we wrote it right and this isn't a spoiler because everyone can see it, but do you know that that mirrored pole in the front of Spaceship Earth is not a load-bearing pole? Yeah. It's not even a pole. It's pretty wide. Well, yeah, it's a, and it's an elevator. Yeah, and as soon as he said that, it was like, oh, yeah, that I mean, makes sense. That does make sense. <laughs> like, I never, and if you look at it, you can see a door on it. That's why I'm saying I don't consider that a spoiler, and I apologize to anybody that thought, right. thought otherwise. But there is a door on it, which now that you know it's an elevator, next time you go to Epcot, you can look at that mirrored piece in the front that looks right. like it's holding it up, and it is not holding it up. It is just so that they can get, you know, if something breaks down or doesn't work properly or needs to be replaced, they can use the elevator to, to get it in and out of. Well, yeah, can you imagine if you had to take one of the Phoenicians down with you, the, the little boat, you'd have to walk it down the... Because if you, if you look at the car as you're, as you're going around on the ride, you see stairs or walkway. But that would absolutely suck if you had to carry one of the animatronics with you because <laughs> that's a long way to go. Uh, you just mentioned the Phoenicians. So side note, some of the new... Um, merchandise that's available they're really focusing on that you know right. there's there's a shirt if you can read this thank the Phoenicians they've had if you, you know it's really funny how they're really honing in on the, the Phoenicians so mm. yes I'd like to thank the Phoenicians because I can read but we we did start by writing Spaceship Earth told us a little bit about that and then we went upstairs well we went to the the ex Siemens VIP area of uh that is in spaceship earth right and while we were in there we could see out you know he talked to us a bit and we were allowed to take pictures out the window he asked right. us not to take pictures of the room which was right nothing special actually the, the tables weren't even finished in that room or maybe well, it was a different room we went in it, it was just a, i mean a, normally it would probably have been set up but since nobody i guess you need to you need to go back to and when uh when Epcot was being well, and and Magic Kingdom and all the other ones, uh, Disney would offer to let a company sponsor a ride, and so the company would spend however much money it costs to sponsor the ride, but they would also get benefits to it. So, uh, and in most most of these rides, there are, or most of the sponsored rides, there is a lounge. So, you know, in this I think, case, I think he said any of them that had a sponsor, there was a lounge for, the, for that company. Right. So here, you know, Siemens used to sponsor Spaceship Earth. So they had a lounge and that was upstairs. And if you were a Siemens employee or however, whatever the rules were, you could go into special door, show them your your ID and they would let you in. And there's a nice little air conditioned area and all that other stuff. So we also we went to Future World West. Right. And inside Future World West is both the seas and the land and imagination. Mm -hmm. And in the seas, we did go to another conference room area that was upstairs. However, we were allowed to take pictures inside because this area is actually rented out for events. Right. And someone on the tour said, oh, yeah, my girlfriend had a wedding here and it cost her $80,000. Right. I believe that was a number I heard her say. Uh, so we were allowed to take pictures in there because that's an area that's open to the public. It's been it's been enough people have taken pictures in there, I guess, is, is really. the <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And inside of the land, what was nice is we talked a little bit. You know, we went and, you know, we, we learned some things about the murals on the walls outside. Right. Which, you know, we're not going to go into too many more details about the tour, any of the nitty gritty, because we want you to do the tour. Yeah, we don't want to spoil the <laughs> we, tour. We, we want you to enjoy it. So, um, but either way, what was nice on this tour was by the time we got to the land, it was now 
10 30 ish i want to say you know 10 20 10 30 somewhere around that roughly you know again the tour started at 8 30 and we were given a 15 minute break yeah and inside the land for breakfast at least and i believe it's the same at lunchtime you could go up to the window and order food but the food is already prepared it's just you know do you want sausage or do you want Right. muffin or do you want a croissant or whatever but the food's already prepared so it was nice because we could order food quickly and have plenty of time to eat it without feeling like we were shoving it down our faces right so it was nice because we ate a little bit we used the restroom and then we met right outside of soren and then we went backstage again right and what's really cool about going backstage is how close it makes these attractions appear to be right because when you're on stage and you're going from one attraction to the other you have to take the long way yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better word sure. but when you're backstage it's much closer so we well and the one example you gave is we went outside of a door of soren and you're right next to canada right <laughs> and and you know if you had to if you walked it at a casual normal pace it'd probably take you 10 minutes to walk from Soren to Canada. <laughs> right. So it was it was really neat going backstage, right. you know, the few times that we did. We then moseyed over to Future World East and talked about the Festival Center, which is open seasonally. And we talked a little bit about Mission Space. And then we walked backstage and we talked about Test Track, where we stood underneath the track. Right. That was scary. It was, and you don't even realize it when you're watching it. But the the track is designed to move a little bit, and I'm I'm sure they picked that one spot because you could see the track move quite a bit because it's 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 right next to where the building is, four to six inches. Yep. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but do the tour, stand underneath the track, and watch it sway, and go, oh my goodness. Right. But it's it, it's funny, and then you know they. He basically said, that, you know, they had to design it that way just for the, you know, it's it's meant to do that. So right. it's just a little, it's just a little surprising when you're standing there and you're watching it and going, wow, that, that moves a lot. Right. But then we did ride that attraction. Right. And we skipped the whole building the car, you know, which is a great part of the attraction. But for me personally, I was happy just to get in the, the moving part of the attraction. Right. Uh, and you don't even feel... This no. way, when you're in the car, you don't go, oh, wow, this is where the, the track swayed. So that was kind of nice that they included that in the tour. And then the basically the last kind of thing we did on the tour was we went to a cast member area where, of course, he gave us the disclaimer that people won't be dressed in costume or they may be dressed half in costume and they may not be using the best language. I right. remember him saying something to that effect, yeah. which I thought was funny that they didn't have a no cursing rule backstage. Well, wow. but uh, and we did spend a good amount of time back there. We got to see a costuming area, which was amazing. Yeah, that, you know, all the costumes and the way they're organized and the way they check them out. I mean, it was really a great tour if you want to see how things are done. Right. Because us talking about it, you know, we, we've only touched on minutely on these subjects. We really right. haven't gone into the depth and the detail that you would get if you were to do the tour on well, your own. He also talked a lot, uh, quite a bit about some of the, you know, like the costuming, you know, each costume will have a, a master set up somewhere so you can see exactly all the accessories you need to have with it and how to, you know, how the tie is supposed to be tied or how the, which buttons can be unbuttoned and if you need a jacket or you don't need a jacket, right. which jackets you need. And it's all very interesting from the nerdy perspective of, you know, yeah. trying to imagine how to make Walt Disney World work. And talking about costuming, that has to do with what to wear. So I think we should talk about what to wear. Okay. But before we do, let me, let's just recap and say that it's definitely a really good tour. We highly recommend it. We did enjoy it very much. Uh, and hopefully you will, if you decide to do it, you will as well. And whether you enjoy it or not, if you do the tour, please give us your feedback. Tell us how you enjoyed the tour. Sure. Tell us your experience. We would love to hear it. But the, uh, I'm trying to remember. How, I don't remember how much the tour was. It wasn't that expensive. We we did get a pass holder discount right. of fifteen percent, and it it wasn't expensive at all. No, because it's because they don't give, feed you a meal, so it's right. one on, of the on the tour. 
in a world showcase it included lunch on this tour of future world it did not include lunch right when we post on the on the website we will include how much we paid or not what we paid but what the base price is because not everybody's going to pay what we paid because we got the discount right but either way the the next subject we want to talk about is what to wear or how to pack for the parks sure and everyone is different yeah. I mean, like, it's hard to say you need to do this, you need to do that, but it's just you need to keep things in mind. Right. Is more how to describe what to wear. Andrew and I have a lot of Disney attire. Sure. Like, a lot. And Andrew works in an office that is very casual. Not even business casual, it's just casual. I mean, right. you just can't wear shorts, but you can wear t-shirts every day, sure. which you pretty much do. Yeah. And four out of five days of the week, you wear a Disney t-shirt to work? Uh, usually five out of five days, but sure. Well, you ha you've you gotten a few uh, Kennedy Space Center shirts, SpaceX. I wear those more on the weekends. Oh, well, <laughs> okay. So you wear, you wear a tire a lot. So for us, you know, I also work in, a, in an office where I can wear t-shirts if I want to. So for us... We don't have to save our Disney attire to wear to Walt Disney World. We can wear our Disney attire wherever. Right. So other people might not have that luxury. Maybe they can't be as casual at work, so they want to wear Disney stuff. Sure. And we've already had uh, podcasts where we talked about Disney bounding. Mm -hmm. So there's no rule as to what you need to wear or should wear when you go to the parks right you wear you well there's i mean there's rules about well yes of course that you know you can't be too foul and you can't right you, there there are some things you know if you are disney bounding you can't dress exactly like the character right. you know you can't pretend to be the character but you can go to the walt disney world website to find out any rules if you have something that you are interested in wearing and you're not sure if you would be allowed to or not right don't use us for well aj and andrew on two grown-ups in a mouse said that we could wear no we didn't say that exactly. we said go to the website but we're just talking generalities because a lot of the times people aren't sure what they should pack and what they shouldn't pack so one of the first things that you think of when you're going to be walking around a lot is footwear. Sure. And it's really funny because I hate feet, but I love shoes. Hmm. You know, I just, I, I'm always looking at people's shoes and their footwear because I love them. And right. I have a large collection of shoes to match my large collection of purses. <laughs> Surprising. But a lot of people do wear sneakers to the parks, mm -hmm. but more and more I find men and women or i guess women and men wearing sandals or flip-flops of sorts to the parks sure and of course when it's hotter outside you'll see more sandals and when it's cooler outside you'll see more sneakers i mean that always happens well i mean the, the key is to wear what you're going to be comfortable in knowing that you're going to walk a lot uh you know i mean even we're not we don't, as you said earlier, we don't go to the parks and and go all day and you know from from open till close. So, but even then, we still end up walking four, five, six, seven miles a day. So, if you're a really hardcore, you know that might be double that, triple right. that. So, make sure you're wearing something that's that's going to be comfortable for for a lot of walking, and then obviously keep in mind the weather. Right. That was one of the one of the items on here is definitely think about if it's rainy season or not rainy season. Are your shoes going to dry off if they get wet or right. not? Are they going to be slippery if they get wet or not? So that's something you need to keep in mind. Also, there are rides such as Soren where if you are wearing flip flops, you will have to take them off. Yep. So you want to keep things like that in mind that you may be wearing footwear that you cannot wear on certain attractions. Right. So that's. Oh, and the last thing about footwear, don't buy a brand new pair of shoes and wear them for the first time in the parks. Oh, no, don't do that. Try whatever footwear you want to bring with you. You should try them out at home. Yeah, definitely break them in first. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to go see that renting a wheelchair is actually not nearly as expensive as you think. Yeah. But yeah. you're going to be doing it. <laughs> exactly. So 
that's, you know, how we feel about shoes. You know, we're not going to tell you, you have to wear this, you have to wear that. You need to wear what you're comfortable with, but just make sure to try it out before you get there. Right. That would be advisable. Shorts or pants or bike shorts or sparkle skirts. I, I like spikle, sparkle skirts. They are a little on the expensive side, right? but to explain them, they are basically bicycle shorts with a skirt over it and a few pockets on them. Right. And what's nice about going without a bag, coming from the woman who owns lots and lots of bags, uh, but if you go without the bags, it can be a little bit easier to get through bag check. Right. Which is kind of nice, you yeah. know, not having to do all that. Though a lot of the times when you go without a bag, they will require you to go through the metal detector. Right. Which I had to do because I was wearing a sparkle skirt on the day we did the tour mm -hmm. and I had everything in my pockets and I forgot that I had a whole bunch of trading pins in my pocket Right. or no, I forgot my phone. Like I wasn't thinking about it. I'm like, I don't have any bags. And I walked right through the metal detector with my phone. It was great. Yep. Not so great for my phone, but shorts are great. Pants can be good as well. You know, you definitely want to watch the weather. Sure. A lot of people have the misconception that Florida is always warm. And it is often warm, but not always. That's right. So whenever you plan your trip, make sure you're looking at the weather. And if it says it's going to have a cold front and it's saying it's going to be in the 40s, so you're going to bring, you know, this means you're going to bring jeans and a jacket and, you know, all these warm clothes, still pack at least one short sleeve shirt and one pair of shorts. Right. And the reverse even if you're going in the summer when it's going to be hot and you're planning on bringing tank tops and shorts and everything, mm -hmm. you know, for the warm weather, you probably want to pack one pair of jeans and maybe a light jacket, not necessarily right. a heavy jacket over the summer. But even over the summer, you can have a little bit of a cool front or maybe it's raining. So it's a little bit cooler from the rain. Well, it's always the middle of the summer is probably not the greatest example because it's you're probably still going to get mid to upper 70s and at night but when you get into spring and 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 fall it might be 90 during the day but it's not unusual to be in the 60s at night okay. or you know maybe you're going to go out to dinner and because it was 90 degrees all day long they have the ac cranking down but now the temperature is falling outside the ac is working better inside so now the restaurant is really cold so now you want to have a a jacket or you're wearing want to wear pants or you can get, it's easy to get caught out. I mean, right. And that's why we're just saying if you're, you want to be prepared for both. Sure. You know, the, the cool or the hot. And the good thing is they sell lots and lots of adorable clothing items. Oh yeah. In the parks in lots and lots of sizes. I mean, the only thing they don't sell a lot of is underclothes. Right. They do sell some, honestly, yeah. but they don't sell, you know, all the different sizes um, and being plus sized. They don't have any plus size bottoms in the park. Right. Those are few and far between. You know, sure. once in a while, I'll find a pair of like three X leggings or right. maybe a skirt, but not a lot of shorts. And, and in general, they don't sell a lot of shorts anyway. Right. But when they do sell them, they have less of the larger sizes. But if you are just, you know, if you're wearing long sleeves and you need short sleeves or you're wearing a tank top and you need long sleeves or you just need a light jacket, those are very, very easy yep. to find pretty much any time of the year because they know that some people can only go once a year. Right. And maybe they're going in the summer months, but they still want to get a sweatshirt. So right. it's easy to find all that stuff. And nowadays with Uber and Lyft, and we've already talked about the minivan by Lyft, mm -hmm. there are so many different ways to get outside of the parks if you right. find that you're missing something. There are a lot of Walmarts, a lot of Targets, a lot of malls that are not too far from there. Oh, yeah. So even if you don't have your own car, it won't be a problem if you say, oh my God, I'm missing whatever. Right. It's not going to be an issue. And I've heard of people having things delivered from Amazon. Sure. So if you ordered something from Amazon, you could have it delivered, though I do believe, based on our friend's experience, that they very well may charge you a 5 or $10 fee to pick up the package. They might. Because that... That's a big hotel, and there's a lot of people, and there's a lot of stuff going on, so they might charge a service fee to, to deliver yeah. a package. Well, but... that happened to our friends right. that were staying on property. Well, actually, they 
the uh, resort delivered the package to their room and then told them that they owed five or ten dollars for the delivery. And they were like, but we didn't ask you to bring it to right. our room. So that's something to to keep in mind. And something else that no matter what time of year it is, you probably want to bring with you just in case a swimsuit. Sure. All of their pools are heated. Yep. All of the resorts have themed pools. Right. You may decide you want to go to one of their great water parks, Typhoon Lagoon or Blizzard Beach. Right. So if you do decide that you want to go to the water park or if you decide you want to go use the pool, and I believe the moderates and above all have hot tubs. Right. So maybe you just want to go in the hot tub for a little bit. You want to make sure you have your swimsuit on you. Yep. Because that can be uh, beneficial. Right. Doesn't, doesn't take up a lot of room, so. Right. Uh, and in general, another tip is it's easier to layer. Right. And I say that because one year we went to the Halloween party and I made an R2-D2 costume, which really was just Disney bounding if you think about it. Right. But it, it was a white long sleeve shirt that I designed to look like R2-D2. And I was dying. Yep. It was so hot. That, and that was the end of September or beginning of October. Right. And it was just so incredibly hot. So... It's easier to wear, you know, a tank top or short sleeves and throw a jacket on over it right. than here I was in this long sleeve shirt. I didn't have any other shirts with me and it was so hot. Well, that's, that's probably, we haven't really talked about how to, how to deal with the weather in Florida. We can save that for a different podcast, but definitely do not underestimate yeah. <laughs> the heat and the humidity in Flor in South Florida or in, well, in Central Florida. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, if you come from a place with not a lot of humidity, you're you're in for you're in for a treat so it can get it can get very hot and then with the humidity you know your body doesn't cool off the same way as it did and if you're not used to it it's it's just kind of it's not probably technically medically it's probably not really worse but it's you're gonna feel miserable with it so dress to the weather and just just be aware and i find with the humidity that when it's cool it's cool Right. Because I lived up in the north from 1995 to 1997. I'm dating myself. And I remember going to the mall one day and I was wearing short sleeves and jeans. And I got out of the car and they had one of those signs outside the mall that told the time on it, and the temperature. Right. This is before, you know, all the cars have the temperature in it. So I got I got out of my car and I look at this sign and it said it was 58 degrees outside. I was like, what? Really? Because I was comfortable. I wasn't cold. Right. I was just comfortable in, in short sleeves and jeans. However, when it gets to 58 down here, sometimes I'm like, it feels pretty cool. It does. It all depends, you know, and, and then obviously with a place like Disney where it's all covered in pavement, you know, a lot of that holds heat differently than, so the temperature might say it's 50, but it'll feel like it's in the mid sixties because you have a whole day's worth of heat radiating back at you. It's kind of like, you know, when you walk out of the park and into the parking lot, sometimes it feels hotter. And that's that's a good uh, a good way. Plus, it's also a lot of it's what you're used to. You know, if you come from a dry climate and come to a humid climate, you're going to notice it much more than if you already are used to the humidity. You know, and like, you know, if I go to you know, like we, we went to a wedding once in, in the Temecula in, in the desert in California and. I needed chapstick for my entire body because it looked like, you know, I, I oh, look no. like an, I look like an alien peeling no. everywhere. Well, that was even worse because it was a Jewish wedding. The the friends of ours were, were Jewish that were getting married. And we're I happened to be wearing a spaghetti strap dress that was above the knee. So it was so hot. I, for me, it wasn't as bad because I was not wearing, you know, a long dress or anything for you. You had a jacket and long sleeves and jeans and it was so hot. But the rabbi at one point during the, the service, he says, close your eyes and make a wish for this couple. And I distinctly remember I closed my eyes and I said, I wish for a cool breeze. Right. And then we got one. Yep. And it went from dying of the heat to it's really cold out here. Well, that's that's the fun part of the desert is when the sun goes down, the temperature just crashes with it, yeah. and that's that'll be different when you're here in Florida, where it'll be ninety degrees in the sun and it'll be eighty degrees once the sun goes down. I mean, there's almost no temperature change, you know, at the at especially in the summer, right? In, in the fall, like you said, though, it's a little bit different because yeah. it, it will be a little more 
distinctive right. temperature difference. But yeah, that the wedding, it was really hot and then really cold. Yeah. But I think we should now talk about Tony's Town Square restaurant inside of Magic Kingdom. Sure. Uh, Walt Disney World. So we went there. Yep. We actually went there a long time ago as well. Well, we've been there a few times. Yeah. Honestly, we usually are celebrating special occasions. Come to think of it, because I remember celebrating an anniversary there as well. Probably. And this time we did tell them it was our anniversary, because if you are celebrating an anniversary, a birthday, whatever the special occasion may be, it doesn't have to be on that day. Sure. They understand that people can't make it on their actual birthday mm -hmm. all the time right. or on their actual anniversary. So you can get the celebration button at the front of the park. A lot of the restaurants have the celebration buttons as well. Right. In fact, Tony's, when we got there, we hadn't had a chance to stop. So I said, do you have the happily ever after button? Mm -hmm. And they did. Sure. Uh, they did replace, I mean, the celebration buttons could be a whole other conversation but they used to have happy anniversary just married just engaged you know etc right. and they did combine them into a happily ever after sure because it kind of encompasses all of those different right. act, you know uh, special occasions that occur so we did get the button from them because it was our anniversary right or our anniversary weekend and we do have Tables in Wonderland, mm -hmm. which we've talked about a little bit before. We pay a fee, a yearly fee to have this membership, but then we save 20% on many of the sit-down restaurants, a right. few of the quick service restaurants, but not as many. Right. At the table service restaurants, they do add in an 18% gratuity, but we're going to pay that regardless. So right. for us, it's it's worth paying the money for the membership because we get our money's worth. And they do take the Tables of Wonderland discount at okay. Tony's, which is a good thing because it was a little bit on the expensive side. Right. You know, the food was pretty good, but yep. it was a little bit on the expensive side. And if you were doing a dining plan, if you were staying at a resort and you're able to get the dining plan, mm -hmm. it would be a great restaurant to go to to utilize the dining plan. Sure. Because of the cost. Right. You know, whenever you do get a dining plan and you do decide which restaurants you want to go to and utilize it's a good idea to kind of look at the pricing as well and maybe go to the restaurants that are a little more expensive when you're using your plan versus ones you have to pay out of pocket for sure or you know maybe you're going to multiple character dining experiences which will use more of your dining credits and then you end up having to pay for some out of pocket right. so you always want to kind of do the math when you're utilizing the dining plan and Tony's is definitely one that you would want to do the math for. Sure. Because, uh, our lunch, even with our discount ended up being on the pricey side. That being said, we both had an appetizer. Yep. We both had a main course yep. and I got a dessert. Right. But let's talk about what we had. I had, I started with the Capri salad. And most places, the Capri salad is going to taste very similar because it's usually tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, basil, or basil, yes, and balsamic vinaigrette. Right. I got it without the basil. Some places put onions on, some places serve it on a bed of lettuce. I always say, I just want tomatoes, cheese, and balsamic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some balsamic will be thicker or better than other places. The mozzarella might taste a little bit different, but for the most part, they're, they're very similar. So I started with the Capri. Then I got the trio which was chicken parm, fettuccine alfredo, and spaghetti with a large pork beef meatball. Right. And then when it came time for dessert, I couldn't decide between the chocolate cake or the cannoli. Right. I believe they also had tiramisu, but I'm not a fan of tiramisu. Right. So I said to the server, surprise me, one of these two. So right. she did bring me the chocolate cake, which was a chocolate layer cake. Right. And would you have? I started with pasta vajol. As a soup. And then I had a pizza. What kind of pizza? Uh, what was on it? It was pepperoni and sausage. And uh, it was actually a... It was a good-sized pizza, actually. Yeah. It was more than... It was more than I was expecting, actually, considering... Well, when we sat down, you had said to me, I can't decide between pizza and something else. Right. And I said, order the pizza. I'll order the trio. And we'll split it. Sure. Which we did. 
Uh, I wasn't a fan of the pizza because it had a little bit of a smoky flavor to it. I don't know if it was the cheese or one of the meats that was on it. I don't know if it was the cheese or the sauce. It did, I, 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 knew, I knew what you were talking about. It didn't. I didn't mind it as much because, I mean, I ate most of it. But, uh, but yeah, I, I know what you were talking about. It yeah. wasn't. But I did like the trio because it gave me a chance to taste those three different things, the chicken parm, the fettuccine Alfredo, right. and the spaghetti with the meatball. And it was a really nice portion. And was, splitting the two items, we still a, had plenty of food. It was a lot of food. Yeah. I mean, we didn't finish it. And that's, I, I mean, honestly, especially if you were to get an appetizer... Right. You could just split one of the main courses and not, and not have to, you right. know, not spend as much. I mean, if you want pizza and you go there and, you know, two or three people could split that pizza. Yeah, it was it was probably I, I always hate making a comparison. But, you know, our local Ita uh, Italian joint, you know, that was the same as a like a medium sized pizza. It was a smaller or medium, but it was it was a it, good size. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was it was more, more than it was more than what you would expect as a quote-unquote personal pizza right yeah it looked like it was made for two people well it was probably it was, here's a good way to put it it was probably about a 14 inch pizza give or take yeah. 12 or 14 inch and we have pictures right so we can show pictures of, of the yeah. food that we ate because we like to take food pictures right and uh i'll be the only other thing i was picky about was i'm used to eating when we have chicken parm at one of the local Italian places, the chicken parm is usually beaten pretty flat and then breaded and cooked. Here it was it wasn't beaten flat, so it was it was basically eating a, a chicken breast like you would get out of your local grocery store. It was still good. That's it, how I prefer it anyway. I well, like them thicker. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh so it like I said, it was still good. The the chicken wasn't like dried out or anything. I mean it was a it was a it was a well cooked, prepared dish so but if you're used to a flat piece of chicken when you get a chicken parm just be aware that you're not going to get that <laughs> so we finished our meal with dessert and andrew did not order dessert but i like i said i asked the server just surprise me either chocolate cake or cannoli right you know because i couldn't decide between the two so she did bring me out a piece of chocolate cake which came with ice cream yep and as i said we were celebrating our anniversary so she yeah, she brought on a little personal piece of chocolate cake for me as well. Right. And it had a Lady and the Tramp on it. Yeah. A little piece of chocolate on top of it. Right. With the Lady and the Tramp. Well, that that is the theming of the restaurant is Lady and the Tramp as well. Oh, yeah, because isn't the name, that's where the name comes from, isn't right. it? Tony's in that movie? Right. So, and, and you didn't see it, and I didn't take a picture of it because it would be really hard to take a picture of, but behind you, where you were sitting, there was a, you know, kind of a, a faux window. But beyond the window, it was, had this 3D effect, and you could see Lady and the Tramp sitting in the alleyway. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I, yeah, it was very subtle, and I didn't think a picture would would capture it, so I didn't bother to look at it and right. try it. So They sat us in one of those half-booth, half-table right. tables, which I I prefer booths, so I was happy. Though, honestly, the, the booth was a little bit low. I yeah. felt like my elbows were kind of high to to reach the table. And another thing about the restaurant is as you know, people have read about and heard about, they are no longer just giving out straws mm -hmm. to the guests. They're trying to do away with them. What is it by next year? And I don't remember, but yeah. So our server did not give us straws or offer us straws, which, you know, I didn't think anything of it because I was like, Oh yeah, they, they're giving, they're, you know, doing away with the straws. But I did notice another server who gave straws to every single guest he had. And that kind of frustrated me well, because if the rule is you are not supposed to give people straws unless they ask you for them, then why is it that every single one of your patrons is getting a straw? Right. You know, and that makes it look like if you have a different server than him and you're seeing this, it makes it look like your server isn't doing what they're supposed to, even though they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Sure. So that, that was a little bit frustrating. Of course, the mo more frustrating was because I know that Disney is doing away with straws because we do eat at Disney Vero Beach often and they only have the paper straws and they're doing away with them as well, mm -hmm. you know, or trying to. Uh, I did invest not a lot of money, of course, but I did invest in a few glass straws that I bought on Amazon. Right. 
And they were in my purse, which was not on my person. Yeah. So it was just... You do that a lot, actually. Yeah, it was just funny because it was like, I forgot that they're doing this at Walt Disney World. Right. I know about it at Disney Vero Beach, and that's always easy because if I forget in in the car, I just say to you, go out to the car and get my straw, or I say, I'll be right back, I'm getting my straw. So at Disney Vero, it's never a big deal. The car's right right there. Sure. But at Magic Kingdom, it makes it a a little more difficult to say, go get my straw. Mm Mm-hmm. Because the straw was probably a mile away. At least. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So it was just kind of funny. Like, I invested the money in, and I got, you know, five or six packs. So I have plenty of straws and didn't have any on me. Right. So that was kind of sad. Wah, wah. Mm-hmm. But all in all, even though it was a little expensive, uh, Tony's was good. Yeah. We would go there again, probably only if it was a special occasion, you know, if it was just the two of us. Right. Or... I mean, we're the type where that's the kind of restaurant, if our friends want to go, we'll say, sure, no problem. Yeah, I mean, we, we had that. We went to the French restaurant in Epcot. Right. And it was okay, but a little expensive. And we said we probably wouldn't go just to go just for the two of us. There was nothing on the menu that we said, oh, my God, this is so good. Right. Um, but we would. But if our friends ever said, hey, we want to go there, we go, no problem. Sure. You know, th- that's basically how we I think we felt about it. You know, it was good, not necessarily great. Well, to, to you know, us, it was, it was for, good for us. The value proposition is doesn't it doesn't make sense for us? I guess is or or it's not it's not on the winning side for us because we usually we usually try to eat unless we're we're going you know we're specifically going someplace nice. We typically try to eat on the little cheaper end of the scale. But well, honestly, this reservation we were going to go with our friends. However, unfortunately, they were not able to go because it was during the week, and it turns out that they had work obligations. So they had originally intended on going with us and then found out about these work obligations. But we said, no, let's keep the reservation because we hadn't been there in a while, and it was our anniversary weekend anyway. So that was why we opted to go. But yes, when we go to the restaurants at lunchtime inside of the parks, it's usually because we're going with other people. Right. What uh, What is great about Tony's Town Square, however, is the location. And it is right at the front of Magic Kingdom Park. Yep. As soon as you walk in on the right-hand side, there's the area where you can meet Mickey. Yeah, it's a character it's a meet character. and greet. And, and it's, you know, it's like the store, then the meet and greet in the middle, and right. then Tony's. Yep. So it's all in that first building on the right-hand side. Which was another reason that we had booked at that restaurant versus one of the other restaurants is they, when we planned on going with our friends, they mm-hmm. said, oh, that'll be a good restaurant to go to because we can just go walk inside the park, go eat, and then we can leave again and go back to work. Right. So that was another reason that we had opted for that restaurant versus another one. Yeah. So it's uh, it's definitely a great location to, sure. to eat at if it's going to be, you know, you want to go there on your way into the park or you want to do that when you're concluding your visit to that park. Right. So the location is definitely all it makes it on the plus side, oh, yeah. you know, for, for visiting. So those are our tips that, you know, look at the dishes you could probably share. Yeah. Location, you know, think about that when you're booking. Yeah. Well, especially because, you know, you don't want to be on the other side of the park either and have to. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And if you're on the dining plan. You know, it, it's definitely a good one to use if you're on the dining plan because of the cost. Right. So on that note, and speaking of food, now I'm hungry. Yeah. I know it's surprising, but sure. I'm hungry. So I want to go get something to eat. All right. So I am going to say good evening. Not goodbye or good morning. Well, I don't know what time these people are listening. Well, we should say good morning then. Or good afternoon. Or good night. Night. Sure. Sure. No, I think you're right. Good night and good luck, sir. No, I think you're right. I think we should just say goodbye. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.